Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I can't wait to bring this uh, gentleman on. This is John Gannon of J. Gannon Law Firm. Actually, John, how do we pronounce the last uh, word in it? Yeah, it's a J. Gannon Helstowski Law Firm, hence the J for John and Gannon, right? Perfect, so. thanks. So yeah, I obviously, everyone knows the Economic Ninja is not the best at pronouncing words. So I needed help with that one, sorry about that. Uh, the reason why I had John on is um, I actually sought him out because we met at a conference in Miami about a month and a half ago. And he had met me, he saw the channel, he knew that I was covering a lot of things about real estate and he wanted to share with me that he owns a law firm in, is it Texas and California, correct? Yes, it is. Perfect. And you were sharing that you are in, or back then you were in the middle of settling your first forbearance case. And to me, the uh, results were astounding. And now you're working on more right now because you have a real estate law background, correct? That's correct. Yes. We have three offices in Texas and then one in California, and we focus primarily on real estate and consumer law. Nice. So we're obviously saying that we are in a very serious time in our uh, country's economic history is a understatement. We have a massive wall of forbearance issues about to slam us, and we have a massive amount of evictions that are literally teetering on the ability right now for those to, to happen. So we're going to have a lot of moving parts in real estate and in living situations. So can you tell me about or tell the viewers about the recent forbearance uh, case that you actually have now seen full, fully to the end? Yeah, definitely. So a little bit of background um, on it, and this let's just uh, recognize, hey, Friendly Bet says that every time that something happens in California one way, it's likely to happen the opposite in Texas, right? But it's all legal, just different opinions about how the law works. And so I think it's fair to say that um, everybody knowing that recognizes that the, uh, the forbearance periods end um, at, starting in August of 2020. Uh, one. That's the maximum time you could have if you qualify for an 18-month forbearance um, that began in March during the, uh, the, the, the recent uh, health crisis. And so in any event, um, the, uh, <clears throat> I believe that they're trying to let the air out of the tire um, slowly. And so you can see that in some of the regulations. So they passed on April 6th, uh, 2021, uh, they, they, they left open for comment some changes to the CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And amongst those changes were um, rules that would affect Reg X and Reg Z. That, that, the Reg X specifically requires that the um, FHA, Fannie and Freddie loans uh, be reviewed for loss mitigation prior to foreclosure. And uh, often the loss mitigation is a loan mod, right? We want to save our home. Yep. And, you know, this was like rampant in 08, 9, and 10. It was the HAMP and the HARP programs. And so what they've done is that they left open for comment and then just approved only a week ago these same rules. And it, it's going to give 90 days from the date of the ending of forbearance for a potential loan modification review, which puts the resulting date at the end of this year, and potentially foreclosures are going to skyrocket for the forbearance loans in December or January. So now so. you bring up a good point. You've given a, a good timeline. The, this, uh, this deadline for people to either choose to walk away from their house or to go um, under a new underwriting, essentially for a new loan. Um, why would, and I'm leading up to the next answer is, why would this possibly lead to foreclosures? Can you give me an example of the case that you just um, yeah. concluded to? What, what was the solution? So here we go. They, they were behind. Yep. That, that's about it, right? Um, good people, by the way, both working, both had lost their jobs and had to find new ones. Um, and effectively, um, prior to foreclosure, well, let's get it right. Um, the loan was an FHA loan, but they had not proactively applied for forbearance. Um, they didn't want to accept it. They didn't want to take the deal. They wanted to pay their mortgage right? Life happens, they get behind. So um, prior to, um, actually, no, we did sue. We had to sue and obtain a restraining order um, to stop the foreclosure. And thank goodness, um, the husband was the second one to get a new job. And we asked for um, a loan modification. Yep. And so it was very shocking, because this was actually starting before the comment period um, in April of this year. But they um, offered a 40-year term. It's the first time I've ever seen a 40-year term. We've done thousands of these cases. 
Um, and the interest rate was not low, as low as the prevailing rate, by the way, it was um, uh, between, um, it was above four, yeah. but it did meet this one guideline, which was suggested, um, which was that the resulting mortgage payment did not go up from what it had been prior. Yeah, right? so it, is, it essentially stayed the same. It was just a few dollars under, correct? That's correct. But then, of course, it extended to a 40-year term. Yep. And um, and that, that's a tough nut to crack, yep. you know, um, because um, the, uh, the, the payment was lower. The interest was lower as well. It was 6% prior. But, but that extra 10 years is real, you know. And I think what, what's occurring here is that they're trying to resolve the issue that came out of the Great Recession, um, where um, silent seconds or HUD liens were created and attached to the property. And, and it was likely disclosed. Uh, there's questions about whether or not the banks told the folks that when they got the loan mod, uh, they were going to have the HUD second. But what really happened is a lot of people go to sell their house and they didn't realize that when they got that loan modification, um, there was a, a thirty or $40,000 lien that they had to pay. And so it seems like the King Solomon approach sort of splitting the baby is going to be to extend the term as long as the payments are less and uh, offer a loan mod, assuming they have the income at the time to afford that payment. Now, you said something interesting. I might have caught it wrong, but did you say that their original interest rate before they started the forbearance process was in the sixes? Yeah, um, it was. I, I think it might have been 5.6 or so. It was a little high. For 30 years. For a 30-year note, it was obtained in 2007, so it was after the, um, it, it seems like 90% of people who come through my office, they either bought the home in 2002 to 4 or 7 to 10. Yep. Uh, those were the times to buy a traditional home, right? Now, so, this, this brings yeah. out a great point, and I guarantee you all the listeners are on the edge of their seats right now going, well, why didn't the bank, if they needed, truly needed the help, allow them to refi into the standard 30-year fixed? At today's rates, which are like 3%, their, their payment would be literally virtually cut in half as far as the interest rate is concerned. Do you know why that is and why they were forced into that 40-year? Well, let's see. I'd like to speculate without names and parties, right? Mm -hmm. I just saw another one today. It was a variable interest rate. It was uh, adjusted to 6%. The MAC, the range on that one is 5.85 to 12.35. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. If you had an asset that was forming with a yield of approximately six or seven percent would you want to change it to three percent no i think that the banks don't want to so how are you going to make them do it i think you need to extend the term so that the time that they're paid the interest rate that is now lower on the asset that's underperforming at the time will over time create the same cash on cash return for the lender oh, right and, and the banks in the in the right as far as the legal process is concerned because there's a forbearance section in everybody's mortgages and so it states if you are now falling behind we are able to renegotiate with you however it'll be at different it'll, it'll be at different terms and you know you that reminds me the ninja attacks you have that really great story that is an abnormal result i was so impressed when I heard um, that story that you had regarding some of the loans that came out of the Great Recession that you had to work yourself, because yeah, it happens, but but I can't tell people that that's a common outcome, right? I, I was told I, the exact yeah. same things by the banks themselves, actually. But really, what it came down to is being honest, having your loan reserves, just like you know the banks. It's forensics. A bank can tear apart your balance sheet so fast within a few days and look at where you spent your money. And did you line up with your promise to pay or did you completely disregard it and, and go outside of the, uh, the lines of your mortgage? And, you know, I can tell you what I suggested to these folks um, in, in the moment. Um, Demographs, they were um, in their uh, mid 40s. Um, they, so they had working years left. Mm -hmm. The house um, had appreciated in value since they purchased it. And so the resulting loan was less than the value at present, and it was 10 to 12% less. So even if it was a little bit of an inflated value in Texas and went down, it, it still would have been a good, you know, is it a home or a house? You'll overpay for a home, but what about a house, right? I, I, I just I directly told them that I suggested that they refinance the note um, uh, once their uh, credit um, and income was stable with a different party. Uh, so as to take advantage of a uh, one to 2% reduction and also, you know, what's the old adage, right? You double pay your mortgage, it's paid off in seven years, right? You can get a 30-year fixed note and pay it off in 15. That's right. 
I don't have a problem with the 40 years, but I do feel like it's a incentive to um, uh, create paying the company store longer, paying to live, right? Not having financial independence. And so I'm weary of that for folks um, that are trying to keep their house. Now, yeah. another thing that you brought up that I want people to realize how important this is. You've just brought up two specific uh, different in, in sets of individuals, and one of them had a fixed year, uh, a fixed term 30 year mortgage in the 5% range, right? And then we talked about somebody that had a variable rate that was at, is currently around the 5% rate. People are very deceived with how many, you know, there's a lot of people that are new to the home market, they're buying homes and they're paying literally 2.6% right now. And they just assume that everybody in the country paid that. But you are literally working with people right now that did not think to take advantage of the lower rates a year ago, a couple of years ago, and start paying down their real estate. And now they're not only in forbearance, but they're literally being handcuffed to these high rates in the form of a 40-year mortgage. Totally. Oh my God, it's horrible, right? Yeah. And then look, uh, uh, date ourselves, right? I think I'm a millennial by a minute, right? Nice. Um, if you put me in the bracket. We don't remember the fact that, you know, if you can tell me what your terms are, I can tell you when you bought the house, right? We don't remember the fact that during Carter's administration, they had to get rid of rapid inflation and then later on, and you used to have to pay upwards of 13, 15% for a home loan, right? right. So right. us spoiled, rotten youngins are enjoying the benefits of the low interest, but, but we only know what we know and you only buy a house and care about the value twice, right? When you buy it, when you sell it, maybe you never do either. It's a 30 year spread, right? Okay. So over the course of our lifetime, it's gone uh, substantially down. If you haven't refinanced your mortgage and you're in a position to refinance it um, and you're anything above 3%, it, it's, I'd suggest looking at it. The cost, the average cost of a refinance is between twelve point five and $15,000, yeah. but it's rolled into the cost and it's okay to pay for good vendors. There's yeah. also people and lenders that will do it for zero in order to get a performing asset. I got you. Um, you know, so, I, you know, look, pay as little as you can for money, right? Yeah, I completely agree. So um, I don't want to, this segment to go very long. I'm sure this is going to invoke a lot of questions, and I hope so. Um, people, uh, if you ha are going through forbearance right now and you're learning things that you didn't know a few months ago, please put them in the comments. If you've got questions for John, please put them in the comments because John's going to be watching this video as well. Um, how is it that people can, and because just so you guys know, I don't get anything for this. This, uh, I believe, is very important. And me and John may be doing some more interviews, depending on your guys' questions, in this in the near future because we literally have a horrific i can't even i can't even say it, that's not clickbait uh to say that this is bigger than 2008's issues when it comes to real estate is a joke and uh we have a huge wall that's collapsing right now and so um how john can people like i said i don't get anything for this uh find you yeah well first off you do you get my everlasting appreciation right but um, but um, you are welcome to reach out. Helstowski is horrible to spell, so you can also just go to gannonthecannon.com. Um, the uh, number to the office on button C dot is eight one seven three two three one two five. And then also, uh, if you look up uh, Jay Gannon Helstowski, you'll find me. Um, and uh, there's only three of us in the United States, so. Um, and I'm actually a person, I do the consults. We have about 30 staff members in, uh, across the offices. And I, you do have my appreciation. People need to know about this. You know, they are going to do anything they can to try to make it appear like it's not worse than what we've already seen back in eight and nine. And it has been for at least a year. Yeah. So, I, you know, I hope good people get some help. Yeah. And you know what I'll do is I'll take your website and I'll put it in the description below. Thank and uh, so people can get the information. Uh, I know this is going to be a big deal. Um, do you know of any other attorneys that are starting to work these forbearance issues right now in other states? Yes, I do. Um, so we are actually up in 26 states for my firm, but not with this particular issue because you have to have a license to do it. Okay. Um, and so if you reach us, we can get you with somebody who does it. and We don't make any money off of that. Perfect. And that would include um, the largest states and our gaps we're trying to fill. Um, and, uh, and, and good luck to everybody. And here's the last one can't pre-charge for loan modification help in california mm. so don't pay for it Dude, okay everybody in california yeah it's so important and anybody who wants to take your money out there um and tell you that they're going to help you out well maybe they're on the wrong side of uh the equation i, I you know i can charge attorney's fees in texas i can out there it's okay. okay that's right? good to know. so for, if you're in california 
and someone tries to get you to pay, prepay for loan modification help assistance, you might want to run the other way. Yeah. And we tell people that because it's right. Nice. It is what it is. It's okay. Yeah. The right. truth is important. All right, cool. Yeah. And then uh, as, as we close, you may or may not be out at the Dallas event, right? Yes, I will be because okay. you're important. And uh, I, uh, I can't wait to have an excuse to go out and enjoy, enjoy life. Right. All right, cool. So then you will be at the event at uh, August 28th. So if anybody has any questions in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Dallas-Fort Worth area, come on by, talk to again in the canon. That's easy to remember. I love it. So, better than Elstowski. Yeah, so much better. Sorry. All right, guys. With that being said, I thank you so much for your time. The Economic Ninja is out.